Our team has chosen Adult Learning Theory by Maria, Jennifer, Margaret, and Mervyn. Is adult education a practice or a program, a methodology or an organization, a science or a system, a process or a profession? Is adult education different from continuing education, vocational education, higher education? Let's look at this. Adult education is concerned not with preparing people for life, but rather with helping people to live more successfully. Thus, if there is to be an overarching function of the adult education enterprise, is to assist adults to increase competence or negotiate transitions in their social roles as worker, parent, retiree, etc. to help them gain greater fulfillment in their personal lives and to assist them in solving personal and community problems. Darkenwall and, and Miriam combine three elements. Adult education is work with adults to promote learning for adulthood. Approached via an interest in goals, adult education could involve work with children so that they may become adults. As Lendman put it, this new venture is called adult education not because it is confined to adults, but because adulthood, maturity, defines its limits. Teaching assistants start teaching undergraduate classes. Most of them do not know how to teach. They do not have any previous experience at all. So they start the semester with some panic. This lack of training shows the need for teachers to consult research about adult learning. To better assist teachers, there is the toolkit for facilitators of adult learning. This, will, this is a great tool to assist teachers in delivery of adult education. Trainers are expected to be able to deliver their skills and knowledge, design, experience, apply the learning theories. Facilitators of adults should promote dialogue, reflection, and quality. Here are the toolkit for trainers. They are to provide for transferring of their knowledge and skills, design and conduct evaluation activities, develop and nurture collaborative communities of practice. Practice, needs assessment, developing objectives, creating agenda, selecting appropriate activities. Training is critical in five areas stimulating creativity, assessing innovation options, focusing on the teaching assistance, designing new services, implementing change. Let's examine e-learning in technical colleges. E-learning courses are offered to students in technical colleges. The courses are delivered asynchronously and facilitated by instructors. The student audience for a required class associated with human relations and employment is a diverse audience. Their skills vary widely with personal and or work experience, age, and motivation for taking this particular course. According to Miriam, these are variables that affect adult learning. The course design applies adult learning theory to meet the needs of the diverse audience in a number of ways. Learner-centered activities motivate students by making the course relevant to them. Students complete skills and interest inventories to increase their awareness of skills, abilities, and preferences for certain types of jobs. Through project-based work, Students set goals and formulate plans to conduct job searches and write resumes. During this process, students are encouraged to collaborate with each other. For example, 
they might share their expertise in resume writing, or they might share their experience with a successful interview. The course provides additional resources in the form of employment websites, a resume editing checklist, and questions to help students prepare for interviews. The just-in-time tools are accessible when students need and want to use them. These theories and styles make it possible for learners of a diverse audience to benefit from the same course in an online learning environment. Part of being an effective instructor involves understanding how adults learn best. Compared to children and teens, adults have special needs and requirements as learners. The field of adult learning is relatively new and was pioneered by Malcolm Knowles. He identified the following characteristics of adult learners. Adults are autonomous and self-directed. They need to be free to direct themselves. Adults have accumulated a foundation of life experiences and knowledge that may include work-related activities, family responsibilities, and previous education. Adults are goal-oriented. Adults are relevancy-oriented. They must see a reason for learning something. Adults are practical, focusing on the aspects of a lo lesson most useful to them in their work. As do all learners, adults need to be shown respect. Learners, to varying degrees, either prefer to learn independently or to learn with the help and cooperation of others. Here are some of the characteristics of independent or self-oriented learners. They prefer structuring personal learning, finding time for learning, accept feedback and criticism, and take control of personal learning. They set personal learning approaches, seek out learning opportunities, enjoy solving learning problems by themselves. Most school systems determine what professional or adult learning will occur based on factors other than what instruction the teachers need or want. This lack of concern for teachers' needs show the need for administrators to consult research about adult learning. For example, a school requiring a book study with each grade level throughout the school year would assume that all teachers on a grade level need and or want the same instruction. The schools need to examine Knowles' theory of andragogy and its implication for teacher learning. Professional learning for teachers should be based on the merging of the four related adult learning theories. Teachers should have the freedom to choose self-directed learning that is based on their experience. Their learning should be project-based to help them grow in an area rather than in a specific skill and should involve the active role of teaching.